Welcome to the new season of the Red Stag Timber Hunters Club. We're kicking things off in a pretty similar fashion to where we left off at the end of last series, with a fellow hunt in the back blocks of Central Otago. So it's the 21st of April, we've got ourselves into some amazing country and uh, we're here to hopefully find some croaking fellow bucks. Unfortunately, my mate Anto Hall there has uh, come down with something pretty nasty, we're hoping it's just a quick 24-hour uh, bug, but um, he's not going to make it for this afternoon hunt. We're just going to go punch up valley for a few hours till dark and uh, get a look into some new country. While Santo sweats out his fever in the makeshift quarantine tent back at camp, Sam also works up a lather during his climb up valley under the hot autumn sun. Yeah, got a bit of a sweat going there. It's probably the end of April and it's got to be at least 20 degrees. Nothing quite like it. As the sun sinks lower in the sky, a few animals are located on the opposite face happily feeding out in the shade that's now on offer. There's a deer down there. Could be a buck. Yeah, been glassing for oh, well over an hour now, and um, deer are just starting to move around as the shadows get a bit longer on the hillside. And I've uh, just been looking upstream into this country ahead of us, but uh, just decided to have a quick look down the, from where the way we came and uh, just spotted an animal out on the face, so put the spotter on and have an assessment. It's a buck, it's not a bad buck either. It's actually quite a good one. Got him? Yep. This could be us, Dave Oak. It's quite nice, eh? Yeah, it's just quite a hard light at the moment to try and assess him. I've got light behind me and then trying to glass into where he is, which is covered in shadow. And he's 1,300 metres away, but um, he looks pretty good. I mean, it's always one of those things, isn't it? You know, you're a couple of hours into a hunt and you go, you know, he looks good, but there could be something better, or yeah, that might be the best one you see for the trip, so. We'll just keep watching for a wee bit, and um, we'll work out a plan soon. Time-wise, it's not even three o'clock, so we'll keep glassing this. Something else will pop out here for sure. Yes, yeah, so it's always a nice part of the, the evening when the, the sun finally dips below the mountains there, and yeah, it's always great to open up a bit more country. I think that's a different buck, eh? It's coming downhill. He's moving. Chasing the doe, bet you. So we finally got a better uh, look at that buck we seen earlier and made the call he's probably not a shooter, but then I just happened to look back down there and I think I've seen another buck briefly, but he was only there really quickly and then got to his feet and um, went on a mission like he was either chasing a doe or, or possibly that other buck. So yeah, well hopefully we can just sit tight and get another look at him. He looked a lot better though. It's two animals just below the trees. Oh, okay, so he's just sat down to the bottom of them. Yeah, no, that's the original one, I think. He's starting to run around a bit. Soon, more deer are spied feeding on the opposite faces. Come on, Buck, where are you, big boy? There's that wee, that young buck in that mob. He's got a broken antler. He's been in the tong up, so there's a bigger buck around there. Yeah, if any of those does were on heat, there'd be a buck there for sure. They must just roam around. So you might not be able to tell at home on the telly there, but there's a, there's a young stag down on that uh, on that terrace, he's actually got a broken antler. It's actually just hanging off the side of his head there. Um, so what will often, often happen is that he's probably got a tong up, well, pretty much guarantee he's had a tong up from a bigger buck, um, just telling him to keep away from his does. But um, the amount of does that's over there, there's probably about seven or eight. If any of those does were in heat, you'd probably find that there'd be a dominant buck with them at the time, going around croaking and that sort of thing, just letting everyone know that they're his does. It's just yeah, all part and parcel for this time of year, and that you're gonna get a bit of a beat down from the older boys, and then when you're a bit older, you're gonna hand it down to the younger generation, aren't you? All those hostile boys out there will relax with what I'm saying. So we've given this area here a pretty good uh, looking over, and we've seen all those does down there, but big bucks just hasn't materialised, so pretty keen to go and have a closer look at this buck. Um, Pretty sure he's not a shooter, but um, at the same time we'd at least uh, like to get it, get some good close-up footage for you guys at home to have a look at him as well. There he is, down, quite a long way down below them. Got a nice guard time on the right, in the left actually, he's got good guard times. His body's not massive. Yeah, so we've had a pretty good assessment of this buck now, and just as I thought, he's just probably a couple of years off being a shooter. Um, couple of giveaways for me, um, his antlers, as they come off the, the skull like that and then they tend to go straight up, means he's sort of, you know, four years old. Um, when they get to sort of five and six, they'll start to get a bit of curl, curl in their antlers and they'll start to come back in and that's when you know they're, they're a fairly mature animal. Also for me, his um, body size is just lacking a bit of that really bulkiness in the, in the shoulders, meaning that he's just a couple of years off his prime. I think if you came in here next year and 
and found him again, he'd be pretty tempting to shoot. But if he can get away with another two years, he'll be a, a real good trophy for someone. Hopefully we can find something with a bit more age on it tomorrow. What are they looking at over there? Something over there, eh? That bush edge. No, that's another buck. Yeah, it's a smaller buck. I'm sure of it. I knew there was two bucks in there. That was the original. That was the, the like the early one. I knew it. I knew I wasn't going crazy. Well, that young one hasn't got the nuts to square up though, I doubt it. So what we see here is classic rutting behaviour. You've got a, a younger buck there, probably a two-year-old, just trying his luck. And then the, the bigger one just keeping him at bay, not even really getting a sweat up or anything. He knows he's not a challenge. So um, I doubt that they'll come to blows at all, but um, yeah, it's just classic rutting behaviour. So it's certainly a promising start to the trip, with plenty of animals seen, including a couple of bucks. The good news for the team is that back at camp, Anto seems to have battled through the worst of his mystery illness. How are you feeling, man? Oh, a load better than midday. Rehydrated, so yeah, feeling reasonable now. Fingers crossed for tomorrow. Brave the quarantine tent, not feeling crook. Yeah, so far so good. Touch wood. There's not many people that get to see me this early in the morning. Can't sound lucky. On the mend, mate. On the mend, feeling a lot better. You feeling like you could eat something? Yeah. Yeah. That's a positive. Yeah. That's a good sign. So the light's just coming up. Got the, the Tonka packed up for a fly camp mission downstream. We'll probably head down about four or five k's. And we'll just take our time glass on the way and find the best spot for this evening to glass as well. Yeah, so we've just pushed on about, I don't know, maybe two, three k down from camp this morning. Just got ourselves up on this high, high knob overlooking some, some really promising country uh, for us light. So we'll give this area a bit of a, a bit of a glass before we move on. They'll be there, they just disappear, these fell into nothing. Oh, there's a buck. See that circle clearing? Yeah. The bottom left? He's quite good, man. Spotter out. That's shootable from here. 560 for that clearing, Anto. Yeah, well, um, two minutes into our glassing session, I was actually just waiting for the sweat to pour off my face before I got the binos out. Anto's um, picked up a buck on the clearing, 560 away, so we're going to quickly assess him and um, we can definitely shoot from here, so fingers crossed he's a shooter. He's got the width and the length, man. He doesn't have huge paddles. Yeah, palms, eh? Yeah. He's better, way better than that one last night. Yeah, he's another year older. He's big body, eh? He's strong looking buck, yeah. Don't know why I'm rushing, but anticipation's high. He's cracking hard, man. Yeah. Five seminar. True ballistic? Yep. The buck's loud croak acts as both a challenge to any other bucks nearby, as well as attracting the attention of any does in the area. So it's quite likely that this buck is the dominant male within this catchment. Right, front on. He's going to come round to the side soon. Here we go, here we go. You ready? Here we go. Real high, bro. Yeah, re range. He's bolted. It's just in the scrub. And he's gone. How far high are we talking? A meter. Oh, well, something's out. That's not, that's not right. I don't know what happened there, boys. Oh, that's my shooter out for the truck. A meter high. What range have you got there? 570. Oh, that's pretty gutting, eh? Um, not really sure what happened. Boys reckon it went a metre over the top of them, so I felt good, I felt steady. Real high, bro. Yeah, real high. No shit. Yep, yeah, re-range. He's bolted. And uh, just ranged it again, definitely had the right range into my ballistics and dialed the correct. Did everything right, felt good. Waited for him to go broadside, took the shot, metre high. 
doesn't make sense. Doesn't make any sense to me. Gives me no confidence for the rest of the trip, eh? Yeah, so I've had a review of the footage there, and yeah, it turns out, like the boy said, I was a metre at least high on that animal, which is just strange, considering I was at the range last week, testing it out and shooting gongs out to six, seven hundred yards, so um, going to need to find a, a rock or a goat or something to to get some confidence back with the rifle and to see if it was shooter error, uh, or in fact... Uh, the scope's been knocked, so yeah, hopefully we can restore some confidence. Back on the move. After putting the disappointment of the missed shot behind them, Sam and Anto continue hunting their way up into some promising looking new country. Well, a bit of hard luck this morning, but this we've covered a bit of ground to get away from that last shot. The sun's coming up now, we've got plenty of new country. So like time to get the glass out and find something to shoot. Doe. A deer? Female deer. What did it do? So I'm just going to get to a, somewhere I can watch because there should be a buck around it. Just to the right of that patch of bush we can see on that flat, flat um, terrace to the right of that bush. Two deer. Yeah, there's a buck on that skyline. It's a small one, eh? Yeah. Doesn't mean there's not a bigger one near them, though, eh? Quite common to have a small buck with a big buck. Just picked up a few more deer and a younger buck. Definitely not a shooter. There'll be a bigger one in there somewhere. There's a couple of deer up on that face behind those two. It looks like a buck sitting down beside a hind. Oh, there's a deer standing up. If you go right up on that face. Yep, and then the one, there's one sitting down below it. Right, yeah. Grouse looking country, all right. So we've found a buck. He looks reasonable. Don't know if he's what worth chasing at the moment. He's up real high. But we'll wait the camera on him so you guys get to see him. Oh yeah, sun's just hitting his antler. Yeah, he looks quite good there, eh? He's sort of on the move, like, he's left those does. It's like he's looking at something, eh? Having found another good looking buck, the lads now set about finding a suitable spot to pitch camp. One in there, one man there. Yeah. Big one out here. It's heated up quite fast. So we're just at our campsite. And first thing I've done is pick up the spotter and the binos and you can see a buck moving around in the tops. He looks quite good, this guy. He's actually think he's better than what we think. Yeah, he's a long way away. Yeah. You don't want redemption? <laughs> I don't get redemption after that, mate. Yeah, bro. No, but not straight away. No, I'm happy if you do whack him, eh? You just want to sort of climb up that big open face in front of us, I reckon. Stags boosting across that face. So we've just been having a coffee at camp and the buck we've been watching has just launched its way around the hillside a good K. It's dropped down a lot, so we're actually gonna push around and see if we can get eyes back on it, get a good look at him. So Stam's gonna stay back at camp and keep an eye on the face that we've been watching. And I'm gonna go see if I can track down this buck that's done the mission. I did not expect a buck to run from there across to here. Yeah, Sam, we haven't seen the bucks. They've obviously gone a bit further in the face than we hoped. So we'll head back to camp and then we'll make a plan for the evening. After waiting out the less productive afternoon hours at camp, Sam and Anto make their way back towards the spot where they'd spied the mature buck earlier in the day. Climbing into a position to enable him to glass towards where he was seen eight hours prior. A few does around at the moment, no bucks in sight. Don't expect them to really pop out until the main light sort of drops a wee bit. So in another half an hour we should start to see a few more animals popping out. Other few sand flies which always proves to be a bit of a nuisance. Trying to glass and keep them off is so never easy. So it's starting to chill down and the sun's just dropped away and with it the deer is starting to pop out. Across the other side here, we've got two young does and a, and a young buck. I'm hoping a big buck will come and push that one out and take over the area. Much like the night prior, plenty of animals are seen as the shadows begin to stretch across the hillside. And after an hour or so of diligent work behind the binos, a buck. the team's patience pays off. Finally, we've spotted a buck way up high. It's 
So we're just debating whether there's enough time to chase him down now. Yeah, I'd say that's your buck, mate. He's got the same shape. Yeah, that's the same one, isn't it? Well, you better get your skates on because there's um, probably about an hour of shooting light left. You need to get right up to the top of that hill. So uh, all the best. I'm going to sit back here and keep an eye on this buck and talk you in. Good luck. <laughs> this will definitely blow the bug out of my system anyway. There's no time to speak to camera as Anto and cameraman Dave punch their way up the hill, battling the clock in their attempt to cut distance between themselves and the buck. And for the first time in the trip, it seems that luck may be on their side. They've come down slightly. Anto, do you copy? Over. Yeah, Roger, Sam. Over. I have just lost sight of him. He was moving downhill and to the left still. Over. Yeah, Roger, that. We'll get to this knob that we're coming to and we'll wait there for a bit. Just carry on walking up, but he is dropping it downhill, so that's going to play into our hands. How far to the right of that face is he? 50 metres and a bit of a tussocky gut, so probably obscured from where you are now, over. Roger that, we might hold our position until you tell us you can see him. So we're getting quite close to this buck now, we're well, not close, but in a range that we can start getting okay. ready. Okay, back out in the open again, pretty much the bottom of that semicircle of rock, go out to the right, over. So is he below the semicircle, over? Got him, Dave. Yeah, there he is, there. He's just up on the hill there. Come over here, Dave. The proximity of the buck takes everyone by surprise, so Anto works quickly to get into a suitable shooting position before it spots him and bolts. I've got eyes on him, and then I've just lost him. I've got a position where I can shoot from. Is he near that next rocky face, the big one? Directly below that sheer rock face, over. To the left of that bush. 150 yards. Yeah, there he is, there. he's just up on the hill there. He's on to us. All we can see is just his head. Right, are you on him? Yes! <laughs> yes! Oh, ripper, mate. Just bloody stopped him right in the base of the neck. Well, that's pretty intense. Big climb up. I'm not feeling the best. <laughs> and to get into the close range up in these mountains is uh, something pretty special. Yeah, that was mean. Oh, he was on to you, eh? And I was hoping that you'd be able to see him from where you were. And uh, when I wasn't getting any replies from you, I thought you must be sitting up. And then uh, seeing him drop. And then the gunshot about two seconds later. Over. Oh, I'm pretty stoked, man. It was a bit of a run up the mountain. Haven't done one of them for a while. Like I had, I saw him and he didn't know where he here, but he went into that gut. So we had to just push up high, and we're making enough noise that he actually come out and just was looking over. And I had to shoot him at the base of the neck. That's all I could see. Yeah. <sighs> nice ripper. <laughs> Oh, nice, nice buck. Been a bit of a hard reward day, really. A bit of hard luck from Sam, but I've got a bit of a representative trophy here. To awesome stalk. Even better, we've got some back steaks for dinner. So this is the guy we've seen earlier today croaking hard. You can tell he's in the croak with his neck really swollen up. They put on a bit of size during that rutting period, and they actually lose a lot of condition from wandering around chasing does all day. This guy did the massive slip on us earlier on, running right around the hill face. Then last light pops out right up the back. We're the last laugh. Well, yeah, usually I wouldn't do such a big climb, but we've been having a bit of a hard time, so I decided I'd put the leg work in and gave it a good grunt. We'll be out in the head torch tonight, but that's all part of the enjoyment too. It's been a big day in anyone's books, so Anto takes his time on the descent to ensure he makes it back safely to camp without any incident. Well done, bro. North. Good mission, eh? 150 metres away. Sort yeah. Of like, yeah, I gave it a quick range yeah. just to be safe and then just lined up and just all I could see was neck and neck and head but felt pretty confident and had a rest. Oh yeah, sweet. You got your bipod out yeah, there. Just drilled him. Just Yeah, nice. 
Oh, that was a bit of backstrap for dinner. Nice. It's always good to get redemption on the same day. Oh, yeah. Felt pretty bad this morning after missing that one I missed, and then uh, you've always sealing the deal on that one today. Was, we'll be able to sleep easy tonight. Buck down, so now we've got to find one for Sam. Redemption buck. Woo. This is my first meal since yesterday. It's actually reasonably tender. What a great way to top off the day, with a cold drop and some fresh venison. And with spirits high, the team are eager to rip back into things before day dawns the following morning. Not quite so cold this morning. It's probably likely to double up. Morning routine. You don't even talk to me until I've had my coffee, eh? Clean your teeth. Just a little bit of venison from last night. So we've just climbed up from camp, probably about 100 metres first thing this morning. Just to look into this, this country here. We've seen a few does sort of spread out through that country last night. So there's got to be a buck somewhere. There's a deer straight away on that bushage. Yep, there's a doe there. So there must be a buck somewhere around. It's some time before the first buck is spotted. And he's certainly not the calibre of animal that warrants a closer inspection. However, a more impressive candidate soon rears its head. Oh, here's a good buck, boys. Out on that big sunny face, croaking his guts out. Work it. Oh, mate. Hey, he's got the best palm we've seen for this trip. But he's only got one of them. Oh, are you kidding me? Nah. It's like he's got a, bro he's got a broken beam on the other side. Is he real big? He's proper, proper beast. That's gutting. Is he on that face just downstream a bit? Yeah, he's got a hind up there. Yeah, well this guy's got a broken antler, which generally means he's been scrapping with another buck. Um, a buck of that size, you'd imagine there'd be a dominant force in this, this country here, so whether or not the other buck that broke his antler is even bigger and stronger again, or um, he might have even, even peeled out the other buck and, and he got a broken antler to show for it, but he's still clearly the dominant buck down there holding the hinds and um, doing all the croaking. So. Well, we'll just wait and see if something else pops out. So the sun's just come up, it's warming up the bones, which is quite nice. Some deer have pushed back into the bush, but the odd one every now and then is coming out to sun themselves and then going back in. So you've got to be looking the whole time because they don't show themselves for long. There's an animal. He looks like he's only got one side too. He's like a four-pointer. Having glassed the entire morning without identifying any trophy calibre animals, Sam and Anto decide to move in closer to the one antlered buck for a better look at him. But en route, a more inviting proposition becomes available. There's a deer just up here. Perfect meat animal, mate. Just up on that bush edge, oh, just in that wee circle there. Just a toe. I reckon we take that. It's just on the edge of the bush. Yeah, this will be a good chance for me to get some confidence back on the rifle, so we're um, we're bugging out of this area this afternoon anyway, so one more shot, you know, it's not going to disturb anything, so we'll take it. 460. True ballistic range, 460. This will be a good test for you, it's only a little target. The deer's pretty happy, eh? Yep, it's just started feeding again, so just take your time. Nice. Come about three or four metres out of the bush. Are you boys ready? Yep, I'm just watching. I'm ready to go when you're ready, Dave. So we take him now. Nice. Yeah, good shot there, man. Oh, that's a relief. Nothing wrong with the gun, obviously. Smack that doe, no question. So, um, going back to yesterday's effort, I guess I can just bloody put my hand up there for a bit of buck fever and cop it on the chin, eh? This doesn't make the pill easier, any easier to swallow, but happens sometimes, eh? And, uh, you know, I'm glad Anto was able to get us a redemption buck last night and we've got a bit more meat now, so all's not lost. What pill were you shooting then? Oh, that's actually my, um, my hand load 200 grain uh, TLR edge pill, which is a fairly new um, pill from Federal. Um, so they're making a TLR projector? Yeah, it's got some really good um, really good ballistics that go with it and obviously a 200 grain pill was, there's not much getting up from that in New Zealand so it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good round I've found. Oh, we'll go and uh, we'll go find our animal. Oh yeah, here it is. Yeah, it's the way yearling eh? Yeah, I'll just throw it down here. We fellow yearling, so perfect specimen for the pot. Fellow venison is some of the best venison in my opinion. This will go down well. Yeah, there's not much to her, eh? 
No, with these yearlings on the fellow, eh? they're really the size of a Labrador. Yeah, not much bigger than Jess back home. It's the thing you've just got to be aware. Like the bucks, they're about four or five times bigger than this, but the does are half the size of a buck and then the yearlings are a quarter the size. Just be careful with your shooting. Yeah, he's locked this room for error, isn't he? Legs cooled down overnight. A bit of a walk back to the main camp, so just boning the thing out. Can make that walk just a bit easier. Even with the meat boned out, it's a fairly decent haul with heavy packs to get all the way back to base camp. So it's a welcome relief reaching the relative coolness of the river, where the temperature is a few degrees lower than the surrounding hill country. While the shade certainly helps provide a little respite from the heat of the midday sun. That feeling of relief is dampened somewhat by the numerous river crossings required to be made during the slog back towards base. Wet boots are to be expected when hunting this kind of country, but there's still plenty of miles yet to be walked to help aid the drying process, as the day's hunting is far from over. Well, we've made our way from down the bottom, and we can see the camp, our main base, just behind us here. The weather's perfect, so we're actually going to head up the valley and fly camp again for the night. Might seem a bit odd heading away from base camp, but when the weather's good, you've got to make the most of it. Yeah, so it seems we've um, timed it pretty well with the light. As we've left camp, we're getting around sort of half past three now, so um, by the time we find a glassing spot, animals should be starting to move around and we'll be into it. Are you happy somewhere? I like so. Eh? It's pretty soft. At camp. Five minutes into a perfect glassing area. And all going well, we'll start seeing a few deer. It seems the lads have chosen the perfect spot to drop camp, as after no more than a few minutes of beating the feet upstream, another buck is spied. There's a buck. Uh, just walking up, up this hill, to grab a bit of height, some elevation. And Ento's just spotted a buck on the river flat down here. No, he'll be out of sight a few days if you should stand up a bit. Don't go too high. Just be real careful here, he's looking our way now. Just lost yeah. him. I only just got a real quick glimpse of him with my binos. Don't think Dave got him on camera. I can see another buck over there. There's another buck on the other side. Oh yeah. The whole way up the top there. Yeah. What's he like? He's croaking. That one's a shooter. That top one's a right, eh? Yeah. So we've got a buck coming in. It's maybe 50 to 100 metres away. And then I've just spotted another buck up on the face, croaking hard out. The one up on the face probably worth a bullet. But we don't know what this close one is yet, so we've got some good options. 600 from here, yeah. and it's 230 to that edge. Hoss down the spot in here. Body Ace, so Bento and I have both assessed this buck up the top, and he jumps out as being a shooter straight off the bat. So this guy down here didn't do that. He looked okay, but we were sort of humming and hurrying. We've lost sight of him. This guy's up in a pretty good spot. We can get a stalk on. Hopefully, Bento can radio himself and the cameraman in. There's that buck. Straight ahead, you see his head poking up against the tussock. Black head just before it goes into that wee bench. He's bolted. We've spooked that other buck. You should see him running on this flat soon. He's hugging the side of the hill, so you might not see him, and I'm hoping the big boy doesn't see him either. But uh, we made the right call not to shoot him. Over. Yeah, he's just a baby. Over. Hopefully he hasn't caught the attention of the deer up top and uh, they're still undisturbed. We'll just carry on our merry way. As Sam crests the rise, he's unable to locate the large buck, but luckily Anto is able to shine some light on the situation from this elevated spot on the far face. If you come back off the face to your right, you'll be on a nice open stuff to get a rest. So Go another three or four metres to your right. So come back towards me. And to the right about five metres and right on the top of the knob you have to lie down and shoot him. Okay. I've got a pretty good um, nice open channel here, but I just can't see the buck mate. Where is he in those? where those deer are. I can see goats, I can see hinds. I think you're best just to get five metres to your right and then lie down with your gun pointing up there. And you're walking to view, over. Oh, oh God, okay. He's not taking no for an answer, is he? Going right slightly. Back track here, mate. Just keep low, bro. For reference, he's the very, very top deer out of the whole lot. He's right at the base of the hill before it starts going up steep. Tony got his head sticking up. I'm sure you should be able to see him now, over. Yeah, I can only see his head at the moment, over. Okay, sweet, so you, you've seen the buck, roger that. I'll just stay quiet until you want me, over. 
pushing, he's pushing the dozer in. Oh, yeah. Pushing his hinds around. He's croaking. Oh, he's croaking his guts out. Yeah, he's good buck. He's a beauty buck. Ready? This is it. This is it. Yeah, boy. Oh, how good. <laughs> yes. How good does that feel? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Especially after missing that good one yesterday. And just, uh, yeah, amazing just to get some redemption. I was happy with that gun this morning, shooting that yearling like that. And I knew, knew if I just did everything right, everything I practiced, and uh, we can make it happen. And uh, he just stood broadside at 360, I think it was, in the end, and looked like a nice clean hit. He just went straight down. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Woo! <laughs> How good? How good, man. Clean a shot, eh? Looked awesome through the spotting scope. I bet. <sighs> well, it's always, it's always fun being on the trigger, but the anticipation's even higher when you're watching through the spotting scope. I'd coached Sam into this position just knowing it was a clear tussock, and eventually he was always going to show, and then he did. Bang. Exact thing. He just dropped. Didn't he? <laughs> so there's a bit of a reason why we're seeing these bucks fellow in the wild, one of the hardest animals to find, but given it's the, the rut, they just put their guard down, they shouldn't be out in the open like this, most of the time they're not, you see what they're doing, they're croaking, they're out with the does, and if you just cover the country, we've covered a lot of k's, but eventually you'll pick them up. Yep. Oh, let's go check them out. Can't wait mate, let's do it. Here he is. Yeah. yeah. What a wicked looking bark. Beautiful. I'm stoked though, that's my best wild fellow, so. Pumped, and look at the country we're in, you know, like far out, man, it does not get any better than this. Redemption buck, eh? Hey? Yeah, for sure. Stoked as, look at the coat on him, it's just stunning. Oh, he's got everything, mate, some real nice palms. It's good guard time there. Mm, nice palm here. And the renown for scrapping, this guy's got a chip, so he's almost actually probably lost a point. Yep. Very territorial, I don't like other bucks in this spot. Look at the neck on him, you know, real swollen. I mean, croaking, but look at that coat, just soft. Oh, he's even got a scar right on his face here. Someone's given him quite a good... Oh, his ear. Look, his ear's been nicked. Oh, yeah. Look at this. A little wee tongue out there. We battle with something. So that's pretty cool. The lo longer you get into the rut, the more chance of breaking their antlers, it's really yeah, common. They get one at the end of winter, they're probably... You know, they're still teeing each other up over the winter months and that. I didn't quite... I was filming him, and then I'd stop and start, stop, start. When you shot, I wasn't filming. It's just hard to know, eh? Oh man, like when I was back there, we were looking at him, and I was going, oh, maybe I could try and get up to this clear bit. I would have been right on top of it. Yeah. It looks big, but it's close at the same time. Initially, I was going to send you over here. Yeah. Because I knew the angle was kind of bad. Yeah. He was, did you hear him? Yeah. yeah. I could just hear him. It's a great outcome for the team, and there's plenty for the lads to discuss on the short walk back to camp. It's certainly nice focusing the conversation on how things played out rather than what should have been done differently. Home sweet home. Home, home sweet, sweet home. home. Made it mate. Woo. Pretty happy. Well we've had a hell of a day today as you've seen. We've had uh, plenty of action. Topped it off with uh, a nice buck on the deck tonight. And, and Anto's actually spotted another buck and some more animals that we, we might get a chance on tomorrow morning. Um, come back to camp. We've had a bit of a fire and uh, you know, cold mower as well. And you look over there and, and see that fellow buck sitting there, it's pretty cool. It doesn't get much better, does it? Nothing beats success, to be fair. Mm. Well, well we've both had a bit of success on this trip. You obviously don't get as, to get out of hunting as much as we'd like with you know real jobs. So we've got one more day of full day's hunting. So we'll definitely get up sharp and check out what's up the valley further. Yeah, for sure, I mean, you, might, you only get to come into country like this maybe once a year if you're lucky, eh? And, um, you know, this is our chance this year. We're definitely going to fill out our time. We've got one more full day tomorrow, so we'll make the most of it. The team agreed with a rather moody morning for the final day of the trip. And despite both Anto and Sam having already tasted success, their fellow buck itch hasn't quite been scratched yet. So they make their way up river into some new country in the hope of finding another paddler to really end the trip on a high. Oh, he'll 
just sitting down glass in this bushy chair and uh, picked up uh, uh, he's about 500 yards away so Hanto's going to try and get a rest it's not the best um, terrain to try and get a rest but I'm sure he'll make it work yeah I've got him what is it 450 just wait I'm just going to try and find a rest mate it's hard he's moved off he'll come back out so I've got all set up where I last saw the buck real common with fellow in the rut they just pop out for split seconds in this case there was a hind on the bush edge he popped out and he pushed her back into the bush so all going well the hind will be keen to come out for a feed as the day goes on a little bit it's only early and the buck will follow out for one last look oh we didn't manage to get another look at that buck so um the plan is we're going to head into that bush and uh you just creep our way through and we might um might bump into him well, he's got his caller out here we go. It's a fellow grunter made by Alan Hammond. Just when you're working your way through the bush, if you're sitting down waiting, they're quite inquisitive species like most deer in the rut. So if you can do a bit of a grunt, they might just come in. Going after a fellow buck in its own domain certainly raises the degree of difficulty a notch or two, especially when you throw the complications of filming. But the team aren't shy of a challenge, so they set their sights on calling one in to set up an exciting close country encounter. So we've worked our way into position from where we saw him. We're just underneath where we last saw him disappear into the bush. Can't hear him croaking or making any noise, so I'm going to do a wee call. Nothing serious, just enough to, if he's within 100 yards, he should hear it. And he might come in for a look. Well. As with bush hunting, wind's a major factor. It's never been ideal this morning, but what we did is we dropped low because it was dropping down into the valley. we come up onto where we think the buck is, but now it's just shifted right up our bum. So it's not a good sign. Any close encounter in the bush is enough to get the pulse racing, but now that the shifting wind has started to cooperate for them, there's an extra intensity in the air as the lads move stealthily through the bush. Yeah, I think there's a buck over there just croaking every so often. Quite hard to pick up with the wind. Is that you? No, it's a good croak. Just over on that face, if not just down below us, eh? Well, we've got a buck over here just croaking intermittently on this face. So, um, boy's going to drop down and up the hill and, and put a bit of a stalk on. Yeah, good luck, the run. Cheers, buddy. Go well. See you in here. So, we've just ducked down into the creek, ditched the packs, and now we're not sure how high up the buck is. We're just going to take our time and find him. Dave, Dave, stop. Just started to stalk. It's a wee spike it just here, not what we're after. So we've stayed real still and he's actually gone back feeding again. Oh, 
we don't have all day, so we're gonna have to spook this guy off. And then we'll carry on our way. Hey bro. That buck's real close. The oblivious spiker eventually gets the idea and bounds away, leaving Anto and Cameraman Dave to continue on with the task at hand, trying to hone in on the buck heard croaking from the opposite face. We're just up in here. A hundred metres or so up the slope, the terrain flattens out into a large bench, so Anto decides it's a good place to put his caller to use and try and entice the buck in. Down. Down? <laughs> He's down. <laughs> oh. Oh. Full on, two bucks just come charging in then. First one I realised was not the big buck. And then the second one looked pretty good, but he was starting to already cotton onto us because the young one ran away. Oh. <laughs> I drilled him right through the chest, but he still run about 20 yards, but he's down. That's intense. Oh, that's intense, man. That's unreal. <laughs> Uh, oh, never had anything like that before. Here he is. Absolutely over the moon with this. Awesome animal. Everything I could ever want. Nice size, shape, back tines, points, curving right in. Really even get onto these guys in the bush, let alone be able to do some croaking and have two charging at once. This is the first time I've ever had this happen and to capture on camera is just something else. It's pretty special. It's a hell of a way to round out the trip for me, um, to get some out in the open, but to get a couple up close in the bush today has just been fantastic. Can't wait to get Sam over here to show him what I've got down. So as you've seen on this trip, we've been having a bit of success, not only in the open country, seeing them out with the does on morning and evening, but during the day they're still actually chasing those does around. One technique is to actually get in to where you think they are and do some cooling. It's worked, a lot of the time it doesn't, but this trip there's no doubt that the cooler made Bell and Hammond has come into its own. They've been aggressive, but it's timing as well. We're in, probably in what I believe is the peak rut at the end of April. So it's a hard sort of to manage your time. You've obviously got reds early April, you've got seeker mid April, and then you've got fallow at the end of April, and you've also got your whitetail coming into May and your ducks. But if you can try and time things out right, you can sort of get a bit of a window at everything at the ultimate time. We've proved it, we've cracked it with this fellow. Oh, hey man, here he is, eh? Yeah, got him propped up, ready for a photo. Nice one, bro. Oh, that's a wicked looking head. Well done. Yeah, I'm stoked, eh? Oh, it's mate. Unreal. Well done. Two bucks coming that's in. That's awesome, there. man. Two bucks. Yeah. yeah. It was unreal, just like, ugh. What are the chances, eh? Well, these, oh. these buggers are hard to hunt in the bush, eh? And you got two coming in like that. Did you call them in? Yeah, just a bit of yep. big 360 croaks. I wasn't sure where they were. Yep. I mean, it was almost like, here they come. Action. It, was, it was fast, it happened yeah. so quick. Yeah, he's really pretty and even, isn't he? Yeah. Both guard tines have got double points, that's cool. Yeah. Wow. Now he's got that nice sort of roundy shape, so he's got the tops coming back in. Oh, that's beautiful. He's a candidate for a caping session probably, eh? Yeah, I think so. This is stunning. This guy's just got everything going for him. Really, really pretty, eh? Nice. Well done. Another Hunters Club trophy for the wall, maybe. What else is there to say really? It's just been one of those trips where everything turns to gold. It would have been easy to drop lip after the disappointment of Sam's miss early on. But the fellas were able to put it behind them and ended up coming out with three very respectable fellow bucks. 
not to mention the mountain of delicious venison to see them through the winter months ahead. Quite a warm breeze. Yeah, this morning was cold. Hopefully that moist tent's all dry. There's a light flicker of rain to keep them cool on the hike back downriver to the MIA base camp. And with the job now done, the lads are understandably not paying a great deal of attention to their surroundings as a high materialises on the bush edge only 50 metres in front of them. Get on the ball boys! Was there a buck there? No, there's a hide. However, it'd be pretty hard for anyone to miss seeing this brazen young buck chasing a bit of tail right out in the open. We've seen a wee buck crossing this river flat on our way back to camp, so a bit of luck if we're quick enough we might be able to get them on film for you. Yep, yep, go. Oh, he's got pedals. Good's that? Bit of action. Pretty cool to get a bit more action like that so close to camp. <laughs>